whenever you played in a swimming pool or uh, with some i don't know container of water or maybe played in the sea uh, any any body of water when you looked at it have you noticed something have you noticed that you besides seeing what is underneath the water besides uh, you viewing what is below the water you also see a reflection of yourself you also see a reflection what is above the water why is this happening why is there two things now the answer is pretty simple right what is obviously happening is that even though light is getting refracted it's getting reflected as well so what is basically happening is light from above the water when it's when it's reaching the water i told you yes of course it will bend right it will bend into the water but not all of it bends some of it gets reflected as well and also some of it gets absorbed as well so if you remember long back i told you that when light interacts with an interface there are three kinds of interactions that happen three kinds of phenomena reflection refraction and absorption so when light is hitting a transparent medium like this or it's it's hitting an interface of a transparent medium like water three things happen reflection refraction and absorption it's not that when light moves from air to water or water to air or any two medium or any two media for that matter uh, it's not true that only refraction occurs now let's consider a case where light is moving from a rare medium to a dense medium now uh, i have a question what would be the minimum angle of incidence possible and the maximum angle of incidence possible it's obviously quite simple because if uh, light is coming like this then the minimum angle of incidence possible is obviously is 0 degrees and of course the maximum angle of incidence possible is 90 degrees correct it's fairly uh, it's as simple as that now think about the other case uh, think about the case where light is coming from a dense medium to a rare medium now you would obviously say that yeah it should be the same right i mean the angle of incidence should it should have a minimum value of 0 degrees and a maximum value of 90 degrees so i can have a ray like this which is coming which is you know uh, incident along the normal and i have another ray that's having an angle of 90 degrees that's basically coming along the surface now now think about it now think of the case where the angle of incidence is actually equal to 90 degrees let's for the sake of simplicity assume that the light is moving from water to air then if you apply snell's law sin i by sin r will be equal to 1 by n where n is the absolute refractive index of water okay now that means sin i by sin then if i substitute i equal to 90 degrees i'll basically get 1 by sin r is equal to 1 by n now this basically tells me that sin r is equal to n now but n is equal to 1.33 right so this that basically means sin r is equal to 1.33 that's it right but wait is that right is that even possible because it's giving us a value of the sin of an angle which is actually greater than 1 is that even possible we can we cannot have the sin of any angle cannot be greater than 1 right then how can you have sin r equal to 1.33 there is no there is no solution for this equation then we've obviously made a mistake somewhere so what what is the issue so the mistake that we made is that we assume that for every angle of incidence for every single angle of incidence there will be some refraction possible and that assumption was just wrong let's let's analyze this slowly let's first uh, take the general case where light is moving from an optically denser medium to a rarer medium okay uh, in such a way that sin i by sin r is equal to the refractive index of the rare medium with respect to the dense medium okay now let's take a case where i is equal to 0 so this will basically be that particular ray where the ray is incident perpendicular to the surface what we'll do is we'll slowly increase the angle of incidence let's say to a particular angle i now what's going to happen so obviously there's going to be a refracted ray and of course a reflected ray as well uh, and since this is moving from a denser medium to a rarer medium the angle of refraction will be greater okay now what we'll do is we'll increase the angle of incidence even further now what is going to happen the angle of refraction is also going to increase even further so the the refracted ray is going to move closer to the surface and of course the angle of reflection will increase as well now the thing is at a particular point when i increase the uh, when i increase the angle of incidence to a particular angle the refracted ray is going to make an angle of 90 degrees to the surface 
Now, if I increase the angle even beyond this, if I increase the angle of incidence even beyond this, what's going to happen? Now, what will happen to the refracted ray? Will it will it come back into the into the same medium? But that's not even refraction, right? Because uh, what is refraction? Uh, refra refraction is defined as the phenomenon where uh, light is bending when it travels from one medium to another. But if it comes back to the same medium, it's no longer a refraction, right? So the thing is, that does not happen. The ray does not come back. What actually happens is, once you increase the angle of incidence beyond that particular angle, there is no refraction that takes place. In fact, only reflection take place, takes place. So all the light that's coming gets completely reflected without any refraction. And this phenomenon is actually called total internal reflection. If that was a little too fast, let me just reiterate. So, uh, when light travels from a denser medium to a rarer medium, at a particular angle of incidence, the angle of refraction will be equal to 90 degrees. This angle of incidence is called the critical angle. Now, when I increase the angle of incidence beyond this angle, what will happen is all that light will get only reflected and no refraction will take place. And this phenomenon is called total internal reflection. For any any angle of incidence less than the, that particular angle, the critical angle, the refraction will also take place, reflection will also take place. But the internal reflection, that particular reflection will be called partial internal reflection. So how do we find this critical angle? How do we calculate this critical angle? Simple, we'll use Snell's law. So we know that when uh, light is moving from the denser medium to the rarer medium, then sin i by sin r is equal to the refractive index of the rare medium with respect to the dense medium. So at when the critical angle or when the angle of incidence equals critical angle, the angle of refraction equals 90 degrees. So sine IC by sine 90 equals the refractive index of the rare medium with respect to the dense medium. Since uh, sine 90 is 1, we find that sine IC is equal to the refractive index of the rare medium with respect to the dense medium. Now, if I take in the example of light moving from water to air, uh, then the critical angle or the sine of the critical angle will be equal to refractive index of air with respect to water. So if the critical angle of water is IC, then sine IC should be equal to 1 by N, where N is the refractive index of water with respect to air. This also implies that the critical angle of water is sine inverse of 1 by N. For more videos and live lectures on the JEE, click on the subscribe button now.